that you're sitting comfortably. Sink the buttock bones downward. Lift the spine upward. Adjust the shoulder girdle so that the heart center is fully exposed. And then as you're letting the breath begin to flow through you with less resistance, allow your skin to soften so that we are no longer guarding ourselves, protecting ourselves so um, uh, firmly. The, the skin and those outer layers of connective tissue tight and bind when we are thinking so much about what we're uh, dealing with, our frustrations and our, our fears. So for now, in your safe place, your home, let the skin relax. Our homes are that one place for sure we know we can be okay. At least at this moment now. Here, this moment now. Here we are in our bodies, breathing and being a human being, simply being. I be. We are told in the Vedas, this actually comes up way, way, way early in the yogic teachings, that the sound of the breath is like a so and a hum. It, it is our use of our voices to say that, but it really isn't quite a so and a hum, but we are verbalizing that sound. But see if you can internalize that within you now. What is the sound of my breath? Can I hear my breathing? And the chief master teachers say that it's repeated over and over, I am that, I am that, I am that, I am, over and over, I am. Now let's bring our hands up to our hearts and to make that connection to the spirit within. And then bow the head as you exhale. And then release your hands. Okay, then open your eyes and lift the head. Okay, everyone raise your arms up. Weave the fingers together and turn the palms to the sky. Bow your head. And release. Twist right. And then twist left. Bring the legs out, straighten them in front of you and do your thigh muscle pumps.
Let's see. I think I know all of you that signed in today. So um, we won't do the, it, it's mixed level. So back things up for a few of us, but I think most of us can handle just about everything. So as Will Smith taught us, we will just get jiggy with it, right? So let's do this because if we're going to do a lot of standing poses, we need those inner thighs. Those lateral ones, triangle pose, side angle, warrior two, and half moon, need the inner thighs to be ready. So let's give it a little extra stretch. Remember, if you're very tight, you can use your forearms, because otherwise your arms will be up here like this, but you need your hands on the thighs. Just use your forearms and spread, and then let the weight, more the weight, help the legs come down, not so much pushing. Don't forget, if you'd like to uh, join me on Saturday at 11 o'clock, you can register at tryyoga.com for the uh, wall workshop. It's making a wall at your home using a door and belts. So just wanted to remind everybody of that in case you want to um, have some other variations of practices to do. Bring your legs up, stretch your legs out again, and now let's all go into downward facing dog. Widen the shoulder blades, release the neck. Lift the body bones from your thighs and press the inner thighs back. It's really a good idea to not practice in a sloppy manner. Pay attention to where you put the bones of your body. So when you look at your ankles, do they look balanced? Is this crease of the ankle joint, is it even and a parallel line to the floor? Inhale, lift your head and exhale, step up to the front of the mat, Uttanasana. Breathe into your back body. Convince those tight places to let go. Then bend the knees and inhale, reach up the arms out and up, come together over the head and then down to your heart. This morning to get us really moving, get the blood flowing, get really energized. We'll be doing the classical Sierra Namaskar, but we'll be moving a little bit more mm, intensely. So, uh, if you think you need blocks for transitions into the lunge, it's fine. But the hands won't stay on the floor. The moment the transition is complete, we're reaching the arms up. Not palms out coming up, palms together and up. Because that is when the arms are added in Vanarasana. In this particular classical form, that is what they ask us to do in that practice. Also, we will be leaving out Sarpasana, so we're going right into Bhujangasana. So the first few times that we passed into Bhujangasana, if you feel a little tight and stiff, don't force. It's okay to keep the elbows a little bent. And as you're warming up, we might find that we can go a little deeper. Let's begin. Stand at the front of your mat with your feet together. Oh, the lunges do have the knee on the floor, so you might want to put a blanket down. Palms together. Head is bowed. Please remember to modify anything that you need to, and also please remember to rest. Just stop and rest if you need to. Reach your arms out and up, and a little bit of a back bend, Ardha Chandrasana, a different variation, and then exhale, bend the knees, come all the way down into Uttanasana, Ardha Uttanasana, straighten your legs. Exhale, the right leg comes back, a big step back, bring the palms together, have your knee right over your ankle, left knee over the ankle, and then reach your arms up. That's a big inhale. And then you have to exhale all the way down and shoot the left leg back into plank. There is an extra breath here, inhale. And then exhale, bring your knees down, your chest and chin. So sometimes people struggle with this a little bit. If you shoot more forward as you're coming down, it'll help you find a way to land. Then inhale, 
into Bhujangasana, the Cobra pose, keep the shoulder blades down the back, and exhale into Adho Mukha Svanasana. Inhale, lift the head, and exhale, step the right foot forward. It might take a few hops. It may take you grabbing the foot and pulling it to the front. Knee down, release the toes. Bring your palms together here, and inhale, reach up. Be careful of your neck as you look up. You can always keep the face looking forward. Exhale, the hands catch the floor. Now tuck your left toes and step forward. Uttanasana. Bend the knees, drop the hips, a slight chair pose here. Uttanasana. Coming up, coming up, straighten the legs, reach back, and then bring your hands to the heart. Inhale, reaching up. Exhaling, bend the knees. Uttanasana. Inhale. Half forward bend. Exhale. The left foot will step way back. The knee comes down. Breath steady yourself. Now, if you find this difficult, just keep the hands on the floor as you inhale. And then exhale. Coming down. Hands to floor. Shoot the right leg back. Bring the legs tight together in a plank. Inhale. Exhale. Ashtanga Namaskarasana. Or drop down to the floor the best you can. Bhujangasana. Cobra. And then exhale, Adhamukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Lift your head, look right between your thumbs. On a big inhale, get ready, and then exhale. That left foot comes up to the front of the mat, the right knee goes down. Help it up there, bring the palms together, inhale, reaching up, 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 up. And exhale, hands come down, the right foot shoots forward, we're back in Uttanasana. Oh, the lovely back body stretch. Drop down, come up. The thigh muscles are being challenged for a moment that they love it. They know they're warming up because they overheard standing poses. Inhale, reaching up. Exhaling, Uttanasana. Inhaling, half forward in, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, there goes the right leg, way back. We're trying to warm the shoulders up as we reach up. Getting ready for the Virabhadrasana one and the Virabhadrasana three. Down you come, shoot the left leg back, you're in the plank. Inhale, pause. Exhale, down you come. Inhale, back bend. Could do a cow pose there if you needed to do something a little easier. And here, do a cat, downward facing dog. Inhale, little look between your thumbs to get ready. And exhale, the right foot forward, knee left feet down. Then inhale, bring your arms up. And then exhale, down you come. Left foot forward, feet together. Legs are straight for a brief moment. And then drop the hips, inhaling up you come. Exhale, hands to your heart. Inhaling. Are we waking up everything? Bend the knees, drop down. Exhaling. Inhaling, make the spine long. Exhaling, left leg way back, knee down. Bring the palms together, inhale, reach up. Exhale, down you come. Shoot the right leg back, boom, there's plank. Inhale, exhale, make your way down. Inhale, Bhujangasana. Exhale, Arumukhashvanasana, downward facing dog. Inhale, lift your head. Exhale, left foot forward, right knee down. Bring your palms together and inhale, up, 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 and then exhale, Uttanasana. Bend the knees, drop the hips, inhale, all the way up, and exhale, hands to your heart. Mm, pause. Just feel the breath moving in the body, feel the heart beating, and then, Set yourself up. So a trikonasana is first. So let's just, uh, some of you probably will set your blocks up on the mat behind. Now you could, if you have four blocks, and not everybody would go ahead and say I need four blocks to do a lot of practicing with, but you could have your extra blocks also on either side of your mat but you won't need them on the mat with Trikonasana. So there, I'm set up. I just got these two blocks on my mat and I'm ready. And this is nothing, we're not gonna work on anything new in the alignment. 
just the four basics, the grounding of the feet. Use your attention, your consciousness to keep that in mind. All for in every posture, it is a challenge for some of those eight points to stay connected to the floor. And it's also challenging for us to keep reminding the legs to work, keep the legs to work and keep the pit of the abdomen lifted and the shoulder position, it changes in all the different postures. Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. Bend the knees on the inhale and step your feet wide apart. Turn your left foot in and your right leg out. Squeeze your thigh muscles, connect to the four points of each of the feet. Reach out over the right leg while lifting the pit of the abdomen. Place your hand on the block and the shoulder blades drop down. And then we stay in our posture and let the trikonasana, the shape, if we put ourselves in, give it time for the magic to happen. There are some of us that have bodily challenges that just comes with life, living life. Please modify. Please modify, stay safe. Yeah, sometimes it's helpful to just uh, do your practice in front of a mirror, or now that we have a computer, turn uh, the computer or the camera on, so you can see yourself and watch. Do I drop back into hyperextension and trikonasana? Do I fall forward? Do I go so low that my spine is collapsed? These are things that sometimes we don't know from the inside, but you see from the outside it can be very helpful and revealing. Inhale, up you come and turn your feet forward. Right foot and left leg out, the other side while paying attention to those four things. Over and over we try to practice this posture, this one. All of them many times, but this one particularly. But each time, if we pay close attention, something new could be revealed to us. So keep the mind present. Then inhale, up you come, turn your feet forward, bend your knees, inhaling, exhale, step your feet together. You can jump to if you like, arms by your side. So after each side, we'll always come back to Trikonasana for this particular practice. And just give ourselves a chance to let that get into the body, the, the, the muscle tissues, the nervous system, and then be pre prepared, prepare for the next one. <laughs> Utita partial konasana, the side angle pose. Inhale, four feet apart. <clears throat> Left foot in and the right leg out. Inhale, exhale, bend the knee. You see, that is where we are hoping we go, right angle. And then the right, left arm, excuse me, the left arm will be over the head. Check, four points. Thighs working, fit of the abdomen lifted. The left shoulder blade reaches upwards with the left arm. The right shoulder blade descends towards the pelvis. Inhale up, you come. Feet forward, right foot in, left leg out. Inhale and exhale. And as you're moving down, watch that inner thigh not to pull the knee forward. Do your four checks. Review the checklist. Inhale up, you come. Bring your feet forward. That's your exhale now. Bend the knees, inhale, and exhale. Bring your feet together on the spiral side. Now, Virabhadrasana one. So let's step these blocks towards the back of the mat. 
And I think that we'll be fine. Just go into it from the classical way, as long as we're checking our pelvis and making sure that it makes that big turn to the right. Inhale, the feet will go about three and a half, four feet, depending on your hip flexors and your calf muscles. Turn the palms up now and bring your arms overhead. Tight shoulders, mediocre shoulders, open shoulders, palms are together. Turn your left leg in well. That's the part that's important to get the hip around and the right leg out. Adjust the right leg a little bit more to the right and you'll balance better. Inhale and exhale, bend the right knee. And then feel, is my knee over my ankle? And then, yep. And then uh, decide, am I going to look straight ahead? Is that best for my neck? Or do I look up? And then when you check the four things, in this one, the shoulder blades rise up. They rise up and they don't squeeze towards each other. They stay wide as they rise up. Those four points should be planted firmly in the floor so that when you inhale, you don't wobble. Come out with wonderful balance and you turn to the other side. If your arms need to rest, that'll be fine. The right leg has to now turn in, the left leg has to turn out. Wiggle the left foot to the left a little bit if you need a wider stance for stability. Inhale and then exhale. And then what's going on with that knee? Is it in the right place? And then reach up, wind the blades and reach up. Now press into those four points of each of those feet. Inhale, come up. If you were looking up, you now look straight ahead and turn back forward. Lower your arms halfway. Inhale, bend the knees and exhale. The feet will come together, arms by your side. But if you hung in there with me, I bet you can tell you worked a little bit in that posture. That's very energizing. Yeah. We can always trust Virabhadrasana 1 to warm us up. We always say this. If you're caught outside in a snowstorm, just keep doing warrior one and chair pose over and over. <laughs> you gener generate a lot of heat until they find you. So now we, we follow Virabhadrasana one with Virabhadrasana two. Inhale, four feet apart. Left foot in and right leg out. Inhale again and exhale, bend your knee. Now the spine should be perpendicular to the floor. So if you look at the uh, computer screen, you see ne, right there, shoulder blades are down. And remember that trick we've been taught, turn the palms up, the shoulder blades descend, hold them down, turn the palms back down. Check out your left arm, make sure it's not dropping. And then we're ready to turn the head to look over the right fingertips. Inhale, come out. Exhale, turn your feet forward. Now, if you need to rest the arms, now would be the time to do that where you're making the transition and then lift them back up. Inhale and exhale, bend your knee, knee over the ankle. Again, the little check. Am I doing the four things? Is my spine perpendicular? Is my back arm or right arm hanging or is it level with the left arm? And then gaze over the fingertips.
Mm. Straighten the left leg, turn the feet forward, bend the knees in here, exhale, feet are coming together. I almost didn't want to come out. That was feeling pretty good this morning. Oh, see all the energy that you are feeding me through the, the airwaves? Now, what comes after Virabhadrasana 2? It's Palavita Trikonasana, Revolved Triangle Pose. So now with that, um, I'm not really going to tell you where to put your blocks or even if you need to use the block because you all have been practicing this long enough. I'm going to actually have my blocks in front of me. However, so that I am facing the camera, I'm going to start facing away. And that means that my blocks will still be towards the back of the mat. There's also something else I changed, which could blow my mind if I don't pay close attention. And that is I'm no longer mirroring you. I'm actually going with you. Unless you're turning around to face the camera, then we're all in a big mess. But I will actually be using my right to go right and my left to go left. So I'm turning around now. So I do that for you. So do that to you. But let's go ahead and inhale, step your feet wide apart. Now, uh, this is the right side. So I'm turning my left leg in well. Turn it in well and turn the right leg out. Now the four points of the feet should be connected. So that means if I'm very tight, I may have to hop my, and I don't have a wedge under my heel, hop the left foot forward a little bit, get that heel planted firmly. Squeeze the thighs. And then on your next exhale, sweep the left arm up and exhale down while twisting. So now you see I can face the camera and do my Paravita Trikonasana. And you may be facing away, but you know enough <laughs> to not be able to, or to not have to see me. The shoulder blades descend towards the pelvis in this practice. This one is tricky coming out because the legs have to um, move out of this position while the torso is lifting up and untwisting. So be very powerfully strong in your legs and as well as you can while the feet are moving, keep connected, keep connected. So inhaling, come up and turn the feet at the same time. Now the other side, right leg turns in well, the left leg turns out, lift the right arm, inhaling and exhale down. And now inhale up, you come. Turn your feet forward, inhale, and exhale, step your feet together, arms by your side. And we'll all be facing forward, and now we're back to mirroring because in the sequence of standing postures, the next one would be half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. Uh oh, balance time. <laughs> That's right. You have to have a little balance in the practice, doesn't, don't you? Oh, speaking about just reviewing a whole lot of notes on balance, getting ready for the next therapeutic module. It's tricky, you know, we've got a lot of things to get together, to work together to make balance work. So let's go ahead and have our blocks ready for Trikonasana. Is your head right? You're ready? Bend the knees, inhale, step the feet wide apart, left foot in, right leg out. Reach out over the right leg, hand to the block with the foot. Some of you may not be blocked. That left hand comes down to the hip. That right knee will bend. The left foot steps up a little bit. The right hand goes out. And your gaze is out there somewhere on something that you know when you look at it and don't move the eyes, you can find a clear balance. So up you come. And then lift, lift your left arm. And then any of this can be done. There's so many modifications. Back against a piece of furniture, face the wall. You can have your back on the wall or face the wall. 
This could be a chair that your hand is on instead of a block. So many choices. And then down you come. Trikonasa. It's always challenging to teach and do. Easier to just focus. Inhale up you come. Legs feet forward. Right foot in, left leg out. Reach out over the left leg, reaching and down into Trikonasana we go. We have arrived in Trikonasana, which means that the half moon is just a moment away. Sometimes we also know that there is a, you can do a half moon on one side and maybe not the other. That's fine. Stay in triangle pose. Stay right here while the rest of us will look down, bend the knee, right foot forward. Uh, I mean, yeah, right foot forward towards the left foot and then the left hand moves out. And then up we come. Steady, steady, steady. Find that spot. Add the right arm. Shoulder blades are pulled towards the pelvis. That leg in the air, keep it lively. So I'm being quiet this time. I want to see if I can exit without losing my balance. Let's try. See, much better. Much more able to focus. Lift up, inhaling. Exhale, feet forward. Bend the knees, inhale, and exhale, feet together. Wow, you know, those poses right there are not they really supercharged, don't they? But there's more. Yes, you know, now if you've warmed up with revolved triangle pose and half moon, you marry them, you get them together, and what comes out? Revolved half moon, Paravita Arachandrasana. And once again, I'm going to turn around so that when I end up in the posture, I'm facing forward. But you can do it just staying right here, facing forward, and you'll end up facing away once you're in the posture. Repeat. Parivrita Trikonasana. Inhale. I'm going to my right first. Turn the left leg in and the right leg out. Lift the left arm. Bring your hand down and take the right arm out. So pause there in Parivrita Trikonasana. Now let's take that left hand, I'm sorry, the right hand, place it on the right hip and bend the right knee, step the left foot up a little bit and that block that your left hand is on, move it out a little bit and you're ready to lift that left leg up. Now remember, there's a twist in this, so the pelvis is going to be like a neutral, like warrior three, but the body will turn like revolved triangle pose. Give that leg this in the air a lot of power, because it'll sag, it'll bend, and it's okay, it may have to, but we try, try. Hmm. <sighs> Hmm. You know, back to revolve triangle pose. You work on these poses, these standing postures. You can definitely tell. You can break up a lot of tension. Inhale up, you come. Exhale. Left leg in, right leg out. Right leg in, left leg out. Lift the right arm. Inhale and exhale down to the block and turn back into revolve triangle first. And now, half moon. So place the hand on the hip, bend the left knee, step the right foot to the left foot, move the block out of the whole foot, and now we're ready. Let's come up, and then turn and add the arm. Now, if the arm isn't comfortable taking it up, it might not have been, maybe that you haven't fully twisted yet, so you can always uh, leave the hand on the hip. And descent, 
Viva Chikonasana. Again, spinning out, be careful. Be very careful. Inhale, come out. Exhale, bend the knees, inhale. Exhale, the feet will come together. Arms rest by your side. Well, we are certainly warmed up in so many ways that now would be the perfect time to slide in Warrior Three. Now, for Warrior Three, there are so many things you could, you know, I have, um, I don't have the walls, I have windows in this room, I don't have walls, but I have a hutch right here, a very nice front piece of furniture I could put my hands on. And I could just turn around in between each side and keep using that for my Warrior Three. I could also have a chair handy, put my hands on a, uh, any kind of chair, this metal chair here you can see, or use this chair, or I can use two blocks and have my hands there, or I can just go ahead and sail right up into the pose. Now, because we may only have two blocks, and we think, I'm going to use the blocks today and just work on the lower part of the pose because I don't feel like I can balance, or there could be a thought, sort of whatever. Um, then you'll have to come out and move your blocks to the other side. But you can see, I have the, uh, available to set up blocks on both sides. Yeah, you have to have, you, your whole, you need six blankets and four blocks up, and an eight foot belt and a six foot belt. Now you know. <laughs> and an extra sticky mat, one for inside, one for outside. Because the one you use outside, you shouldn't use inside, right? Bend your knees, inhale, and step your feet wide apart. Virabhadrasana one, remember, so the palms turn up and the arms go like this. Or here, a little bit wide for tighter shoulders and all the way together for the open shoulders. The left leg comes in, the right leg goes out, back up just a little bit. Inhale, and on the exhale, bend that right knee. Okay, pause there, and let's see what happens. Lean over your right leg, shift the weight forward a little bit, and then lift the back leg. Lift the arms, lift the leg. Virabhadrasana three. Now do the best you can, um, and then if you're having trouble, you can always drop your hands down and catch your blocks. If you have your balance and you're using blocks, you could do like balancing cat. If I have the right, your left leg lifted, lift the opposite arm. So I lift the right arm, left leg, balance on the right leg, and steady myself using my left arm. But let's all go back to warrior one now. Reach that left leg back, land your warrior one. Straighten the leg, inhale, and exhale, turn forward. Now let's all bring our hands down, even if we don't need to move any props, but give those who do need, whether they're using a chair or blocks, a chance to move props. And for all the rest of us to catch our breath. Mm. That puts a lot of work in the body, doesn't it? But don't we need that? I mean, if we are sequestered much longer, we should be doing five and six and seven of these warrior threes daily for sure. Ah, oh, okay, the rest is over. Bring your arms out to the side, turn your palms up. You have your choices for your arms. And by the way, when you're in the Warrior Three, you can also do airplane arms, slightly down from the um, shoulders arms, and even the goalpost arms. So you have so many choices, and you are uh, familiar with many of them. So do the one that makes you feel very comfortable and challenged. So you're in the warrior one, you've gone for the full thing. Now lean over, shift the weight onto that left leg, and then lift the back leg, soar. And then back to warrior one. Straighten the leg, turn forward, lower the arms, bend the knees, inhale, exhale, your feet come together, arms by your side. I know you're thinking, please, 
Please let that be the last of the challenging postures. But we have not done Parivrita Pajavanasana. And that is next. <laughs> but what we'll do for that one is we'll do it from the floor and up. So this is so challenging for some of us to just spin into the posture because the back leg, this is the one of the same postures where we will not be able to ground all eight points. We'll let the back leg heel come up. It will be in a lunge. So for this one, I will also, as I did um, earlier, I will be doing my right side. So I'm facing, um, I will not be mirroring. And that way when I'm twisting, I'm facing back the camera again. So let me have a moment of punch. So that means um, I will be, if I'm going to the right leg, yeah, the right leg will be here. That is correct. So here we go. We're going to go down. If you need a blanket for your knee, please add that. If you, there's a lot of variations that you will, I'll go over there quickly. You can use a block on the outside of the leg, on the inside of the leg, your elbow on the outer knee, on the knee. So many choices. The right leg comes forward. Now your left elbow is here and you can make a fist, right? That'll be much more powerful than the palms that people are doing. So it's like this and then you can push down. That you actually have more power and more leverage. And then tuck your left toes and lift your left knee. So you see if I do it this way, I can face you when I'm in the posture. Now, those of you who can get your hand down on the block, come down to the block and add that arm in the pose. Don't think about coming out. <laughs> I know sometimes we have to, but I want you to stay with me if you could. <laughs> this pose does so much. Down we come. We have to unwind ourselves and come down. And then I'll turn around. Left leg forward. Right elbow to knee. Slide the arm any way you want to make a fist. Hand, the left hand cups the right fist. Now, remember, a simple version is to just keep your right hand on the block on the inside of the leg. You'll still get your twist. You'll still get your lunge. You can even still add the arm. But some of us want to go for the deep twist, right? So we hit the back leg up, and then we start adding more pieces. This hand didn't come down. That back leg needs to be strong. And then that left arm shoots over the head. So go as far as you can into the different pieces. And then release. One more. Today, for partial tanasana, I'm going to do the hands down variation. But if you'd like to place your hands behind your back and reverse namaste or interlace the fingers and straighten the arms, you're fine to do that. But I'm going to keep my blocks on the two sides of my mat like this, and also give you a chance to move the blocks if you'd like to, if you're using them. This is the intense side stretch pose. Let's give you a moment to catch your breath with me. Hmm. It's perfect, too, for an hour class to do the standing postures, isn't it? So if you said, oh, I only got an hour, what should I do? Do the standing pauses. They take care of everything. I want you to pay attention to how you feel today afterwards. I mean, right now you're probably exhausted. Thinking, Can we just do Shavasana and forget about it? But um, you want to go ahead. Let's finish the sequence and see how you feel. Bend your knees. Inhale, step your feet wide apart. I'm going to put the hands on the hips and sun doing the hand. Uh, hands down version, but you can also reach, put your hands behind you in the reverse namaste or interlace your fingers with straight arms. Turn your left leg in well and the right leg out. I'm going to adjust my feet a little wider apart, get the pelvis level, inhale, look up, and exhale, bend forward. Place the hands on your blocks if you're coming to the hands down variation. Get your spine as straight as you can, and then exhale over the right leg. Coming down further, 
to a safe place for you and your hamstrings. And straighten the arms from back to the blocks because it'll help you be in a better place to inhale and lift up and then turn your feet forward. Now we do the other side. Left leg, right leg in, left leg out. Inhale and exhale. Hands to the blocks. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, straighten the legs, bring your hands back onto the blocks, and then inhale the rest of the way up. Turn your feet forward, then the knees inhale, and bring the legs together, exhale. Now we'll do the one that brings it all together, Prasarita Parotarasana. So we'll just place two blocks here. For me, that's just for me, everyone needs to have um, amount of height for their extended spine part of the pose. Step the feet wide apart. Turn the feet slightly and to make sure the thigh bones roll in and not out. Inhale, just like you did in the last posture. Bend forward, and I'm bringing my hands to blocks. Open people just use your floor. Other people may be higher. But let's take one more breath here, and then exhale. Sink a little deeper. Move the blocks out, a little out of the way if you need to, and come into your full pose. But check the four corners of each of your feet feel balanced into the floor. The thigh muscles are working. The pit of the abdomen does not relax. You keep lifting it even in a forward bend. And in this practice, this position, the shoulder blades will rise upwards so the shoulders will lift away from the floor. Now we're ready to come out. Walk the hands forward. Bring your blocks onto the mat if you want to use them. Wiggle the feet together a little bit. Have the knees a little bent when you inhale, come up and then stretch the feet all the way the rest of the way together. Ah, oh, nice. Okay, so while you're catching your breath, three quick demos. One, if I'm going to do the um, Vipiriti Karni in the middle of the room, so I can do it actively, I just need one block and maybe a blanket. Maybe you want a blanket also to elevate your shoulders, the head on the sticky mat of the floor and the shoulders a little elevated, lift the hips, that goes under the sacrum, right, towards the tailbone, and then make sure you have the dome, don't be collapsing, you have to come up on your shoulders and have a big lift in your chest. And then the knees come up and the legs go straight, and then in this variation, when you come down, when you're finished, you always do the isometric contractions. The block doesn't have to be that high, then shoulder stand using my prop here. My hutch becomes my wall. So I will take the mat all the way there. Have one blanket to spread open so that my head is on something soft. And my other blankets, and I'll use four, will be for my shoulders. Head will be here, shoulders here. And so I have um, one more blanket behind me. <laughs> now you can belt your elbows if you want to. Uh, it's, if, if we were going to stay a long time and your shoulders are very tight and they want to flat to the side of the same, be a really good idea. Now then you have this block that goes there so that when you lie sideways on the block and roll back, Head here on the red blanket, shoulders here on the yellow blanket, pelvis here on the block, heels up the wall. And then you push the heels into the wall and lift up and you'll just be in shoulder stand right where you are. Otherwise, 
And, and I think most of you have practiced that. And because of time, I'm just going to go ahead and slide this back out and just start from right here. You have three choices. And there is a fourth. There's one more I'd like to share with you. And that is you can just do bridge pose. That is a wonderful substitute. So I check. My head is on my blanket. My shoulders are on my stack. That makes sure that when I come up into a shoulder stand, I don't hurt my neck. And my pelvis is lifted because I don't want to start my pelvis lower than my spine. And I'm just going to roll. I'm going to roll over into plow pose. So I roll over. And if you needed a, um, a chair, you could. And then tuck the shoulders under like you're doing bridge pose. Interlace the fingers and tuck, tuck. Grab the skin of your back, lift it to the ceiling, and up your legs go. And then when you're there, whatever you do, do not look up at the ceiling. I mean, at the camera. Don't turn your head. Do look at the ceiling. Do look at the ceiling. Not to the, uh, what's beside you. And we'll begin to come down. Now, if you can't reach to plow pose, you can always just bend the knees and drop the knees close to your head. Catch the floor and roll down. Wiggle back, whichever variation you did. Let the pelvis stay up on the full blankets. And then just rest there for a moment. I know that was very quick instruction, but hopefully your years of work at Triad Yoga has prepared you for that so that you can make a quick, this is what I need to do. This is what I should do. This is what's best for me. And then we'll roll over to the side and everyone please get your props for Shavasana. Lovely practice, I think. I feel energized and ready to take on the day. Let's make sure we're comfortable. Lie on your back. Support your head, your legs. Be warm and rest.
A slow deep breath into your body and release it. Bend your knees and gently rock your legs side to side. And then roll all the way over to your right side and pause. And then use your arms and press into the floor and come to a seated posture. The light within me sees and the light within me honors that beautiful light within you. Namaste.